Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today on tips to work from home effectively. My name is Michael Chagru. I'm the president of Pace Technical Services. If you're not familiar with us, we're a managed IT services provider working with several businesses in the Toronto area. Anyways, um, this webinar, uh, based on the current time that we are going through right now with COVID-19, uh, having everybody working from home all over the place, a lot of people working from home for the first time. We thought we would um, offer some uh, help and hopefully it will help some people out in getting through their day at home and trying to keep business functions going um, while they're not working in the office. So our previous webinar on Microsoft Teams, if you haven't seen it, is really good for helping communicate and everybody stay connected within the office, uh, whether or not we're going through a crazy time or not. Um, and hopefully this one will help with just the nuts and bolts of the physical part of working from home. So let's jump right into it. Um, the first thing uh, that we wanted to offer up is uh, trying to structure your day. Even though you're working from home, uh, it, uh, overall, what we're going to try and do is try and structure our day and keep our day as normal as we possibly can. So, you know, using your CRM or Outlook or Google Calendar, whatever you use to plan your day, but using that and planning out your day, filling in time, time slots, time blocking, whatever you want to call it, but trying to fill up your day so you don't have a lot of time on your hands um, without things to do scheduling your time as much as you can, sharing your calendar wherever that's appropriate. And you know what, now is also a good time to kind of ask yourself when you're out of the office environment or maybe certain portions of your business are on hold, what are the other things that you can get done? Tasks and projects and things like that within the business that you might not otherwise have time to because you're just so stuck in the day-to-day -day of regular business now that it's possible that some things may have, you know, scaled back or slowed down, do you have any extra bandwidth to work on some of those things that, you know, you said you would always love to get around to, but never could? You know, what are those things? And maybe to put some thought there into things that you might be able to do right now. Creating a workspace. So obviously you're at home, you may or may not be blessed with a lot of space at home or extra rooms or separate rooms. So whenever possible, try and find a quiet space, you know, good lighting uh, and designate it as a no distraction zone if that's a possibility. Certainly keeping your uh, work area separate from where you spend your leisure time, like away from in front of the TV and other things that could distract you. Uh, and also don't recreate your working area in your living room or your bedroom. I guess, uh, again, unless you live in a studio apartment and there's really no getting around it, if it's possible, try and keep it away from some of those spaces. So, and to give you a visual, <laughs> do and don't. Limiting distractions as much as you can. Uh, I know it's gonna be a real temptation, especially in this day and age. Um, social media is completely lit up with everything that's going on around the world. So it's really tempting to jump on and see what everybody is saying, but Again, trying to keep the workday as, as uh, typical as you possibly can and limiting your time there. Mimicking your typical behavior as you would when you're in the office. I know it's again, that's hard when you're in a different environment, but um, I think if you put a little bit of focus to it, you can probably do it. And chit chat and other personal video calls and conversations and things like that. You know, try and reserve your business hours for business time and um, you know, try and do some other more personal things after regular business hours if you can. Also on that same note, even though you're working from home, you know, don't make it a 24 hour workday either, you know, still try and separate work time from, uh, from home time and personal time. Communicate expectations at home. Um, you know, you might be working from home, but you're still gonna have company or other beings uh, probably within your home. So make sure any roommates, family members, you know, of course pets too, <laughs> respect your space during work hours um, and uh, are, aren't walking in or barging in on meetings and things like that if you can help it. 
The other thing to remember, keeping healthy and motivated, you know, sometimes when you're at home because you're trying to find a separate quiet space, you might be holed up into a smaller area or uh, then you're used to working. You might have, uh, you know, when you're in an office and you're going around and communicating with other people, you might be, you know, walking from desk to desk quite a bit during the day, walking over to meetings where working at home, you might be separated to just one individual area. So it's important to try and keep your health in mind and um, keep moving around. So get up occasionally, walk around, do stretches. You know, one of our clients uh, had uh, had a conversation with him about this and he said he was taking regular bre breaks and doing two minute planks um, throughout the day. Maybe I'll do uh, 30 second planks. Um, make sure you're eating healthy as well. Um, you know, it's also a big temptation, you know, when you're in the office, you don't necessarily, or well, depending on your office, you may or may not have access to a lot of foods and certainly snack foods. And that can be a big temptation too when it's nearby and you're looking for something to do or occupy your time uh, grabbing that bag of chips or something like that it can be very tempting. Um, practice physical uh, distancing, again, in this time to ensure everybody's well-being. So, of course, uh, adding another visual here, the do and don't, pretty obvious. Clear communication. Again, trying to keep day-to-day -day as regular as possible. Keep existing team and company meetings, like if you have an all-staff meeting or management meetings or daily meetings, daily huddles. Certainly we do in our company, we have daily huddles in every department. We have a weekly all-staff meeting and uh, using a, a a tool like Microsoft Teams has helped us to keep that pretty normal and on track. We haven't uh, canceled any meetings. All meetings still continue to go on, even though we're all working remotely right now. So as much as possible, you should do that within your own company. Use video when you can, again, just to try and keep things personal. And of course, to remember what people look like <laughs> in the office. Although uh, video is a double-edged sword, so you know you have to make sure you're somewhat presentable as well and make a clear plan for action that keeps everyone productive and on schedule. So really put some thought into how you guys are gonna run and manage your day. Um, dressing appropriately. I know it's, uh, you're at home, but um, you know, having video calls in your pajamas every day may or not, may or not be the right uh, road to go down. Um, but I think sometimes if you, you know, continue to dress, even someone how you normally do or more presentable. Again, it's all a mental thing. Um, yeah, trying to uh, keep keep that image going and keep that mental uh, focus going of work time versus being super relaxed and super relaxed clothing sometimes can, you know, make you not feel as much like working. And then uh, the last thing we'll talk about is uh, security and certainly securing remote access now that lots of people are working from home. Um, so this is one thing that can be very different depending on your environment. So it's something you're most likely gonna speak to whoever your IT people are. Certainly if you wanted to speak to us privately about that, we'd be happy to help you out. Um, but all depending on your environment, look, if you're already set up 100% on the cloud, then uh, most likely this is uh, in a lot of ways gonna be business as usual. You should have access uh, remotely to all of your systems. But there's certainly lots of businesses out there that have uh, a lot of their systems and software all remote within the office. Um, so in that kind of an environment, 100% when you go home, hopefully you should be using a VPN for creating a secure tunnel for your access from home and back into the office. Again, something that uh, if you're not doing right now, you're gonna wanna speak to your IT people about. Um, if you can, consider using two-factor authentication, again, for increased uh, security. Um, certainly remote desktop, the Microsoft remote desktop has been a target for cyber criminals in um, infiltrating networks and gaining access to people's systems and networks, because there is a flaw within it. But once you do implement two-factor authentication with remote desktop, uh, there's other security 
enhancements that you can uh, can add on to remote desktop. But if you add two-factor authentication, that's definitely a good one that increases uh, security and robustness of your network and your remote access. Last thing I wanted to mention was um, just being really hyper aware with security and phishing, especially um, during times like this. Um, threat actors and cyber criminals use these kind of situations uh, to trick people. So with phishing campaigns all around, it could be around security announcements or just around the topic of the day with whatever kind of distraction is going on, certainly right now with COVID-19. And a lot of people are gonna be really tempted to click on things um, of information uh, or links that they think they need to access that look really, really uh, important and certainly look legitimate. Um, but just be vigilant and be hyper aware, look at the sender, hover over the sender's email to make sure it is a legitimate email. Um, there are third party, uh, we implement a phishing uh, security tool uh, that can be applied that will, that will help uh, scan whatever page or web pages that you might be accessing from your email or otherwise that will uh, block that access for you if they sense any kind of a threat on whatever landing page that you were going to go to. So there are some tools, but I think, um, you know, these threat actors are very, very smart and really good at tricking people. So I think you still also have to be vigilant yourself and uh, constantly be looking at things. So that's basically uh, everything that we wanted to show you today. Here's a few more resources on working from home. If you want to access these links, the first one, if you don't have a home office at all and no desk space, some ideas for workarounds that you, um, that you might be able to utilize. Second one from USA Today, optimizing your work area at home and kind of a guide that, that helps you get going there. And the last thing, um, one of our blog articles, we have several blog articles on security and securing your network's data, but also secure remote access using a VPN, things like that. So if you go to pacetechnical.com and go to media and our blogs, you can sift through there and there'll be lots of information, hopefully helpful things that you might be able to use. With that, um, that ends our webinar today. I hope you found some useful information that might be able to help you or some of your colleagues out working from home. And uh, if you had any questions or further, um, either questions or concerns or things that you might need help with, uh, certainly you can get in touch with me, Mike at pacetechnical.com, or I'm sure you can find us from our website, pacetechnical.com and uh, click on the contact us button. Outside of that, I hope everybody is staying happy and healthy and I wish everyone all the best. Take care.